Hello everybody, I'm Sam and welcome to episode number 6 of An Irish Knitting Podcast. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sam. I'm a artist and a knitting designer, of course, based in the Republic of Ireland. And you can find me on uh, everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course on Ravelry, looking for Irish farm art. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, this really means a lot to me. This is my knitting talk show or the podcast in which I try to follow the classic format of a knitting podcast uh, talking about uh, Finnish works, works in progress and uh, acquisition and usually at the end of each video I give a little bit of some personal thought, personal stories, um, announcements, stuff like that. And everything under the eye of an artist, of course. If you are a returning viewer, well, thank you so much for all the kind comments that you left on my previous video. And uh, I will, of course, announce the winner of uh, my 500 subscribers giveaway at the very end of this video, so stay tuned. Let's just jump into Finnish works. And the first thing that we must talk about, of course, is what I'm wearing. And this is my Marius number 50 uh, sweater from uh, Sadness. Uh, as per usual, I will pop a description box situation here with all the informations and you can find every information about what I'm talking of in my robbery store as well. This is their fingering weight uh, um, model for the Mario sweater. I have been knitting this using um, Drops Fable which is 75% wool and 25% nylon. It's their Drops um, sock yarn type of thing but I really found that it worked quite well for a jumper. I'm wearing this all the time. I knitted this back last year or the year before and I've been wearing this all the time dressing up with a shirt or like this with a t-shirt underneath the wool is amazingly soft and it's very durable you can't see any peeling at all any bubbling is just basically a horse work of a jumper and I really love the Marius theme on the yoke as well Talking about uh, Finnish works uh, since my last video, the first one that I will talk about is my first pair of socks. <laughs> These are called your basic jean socks. It's a pattern that I came up with and uh, you can find them in my rubbery store. The way I construct this pattern is a way for everybody that uh, never knitted a sock before to learn how to knit a pair of socks. It's a very simple pattern. It's written both uh, bottom up, so from the toe up and cuff down. So you can follow in the pattern which type of construction you wish. And uh, the heels, it's an after toed heel. It's a technique that I just acquired uh, a few weeks ago and I have been completely in love ever since with this technique. It's very simple, the toe doesn't show any gap and it's really beautiful and really wearable. So talking about uh, after toed heel, I have been asked to walk through a little bit the after toed heel. Uh, of course in the pattern I will mention a couple of good tutorial that you can follow for your after heel. It's a very simple type of construction. You basically need the pipe of the uh, sock, the tube from the bottom up or the, the top down uh, and then when you reach the level in which you want to put your heel you thread through half of the existing needle a length of waste yarn in a contrasting color and this will be your 
a safe line or lifeline to be able to put the stitches back into the needles when you want to start knitting your toe. The second step will be to knit all the stitches with a third contrasting colors. You then put the stitches back on your uh, needles and uh, you continue on working with the same uh, pattern. When you have knitted once again with the pattern the same half stitches, you then want to thread as well another length of contrasting colors to those um, stitches as this will be the second lifeline thread for you to be able to put the stitches back onto the needle. You continue working your sock all the way to finish, you cast off your sock and you have your sock placement, your heel placement. When you decide to knit your heel it's just a matter of putting back the stitches onto the two needles, so the top and the bottom stitches, the ones that were concealed with the lifeline thread. You then start unraveling the middle threads, the ones that you have knitted back and forth, and from then on the heel will open and then you can start following your pattern to knit the heel. And that's basically it. Doesn't take much. It's a very simple way of knitting a heel. These are knitted using Adria Fiel Calza Socks, which is an Italian brand, 25% nylon and 75% wool. It's probably my favorite uh, sock yarn so far, but I will talk about sock yarn a little bit later. As I mentioned, I wanted to give everybody the possibility of having a very simple, very effective and very quick pattern to learn how to knit socks and as well to have the possibility of customizing your socks as much as you wish. I wrote the pattern in three different sizes, so small, medium and large, for more or less an adult audience, but if you tweak a little bit a small size you can get children's socks as well. It's being knitted using circular needles, uh, but in the pattern you can find the instruction to knit it using DPNs. So, as you can see, it's a very customizable, very easy to follow pattern that you can make your own, and that was the meaning behind uh, these socks here. They are called your basic gym socks because, of course, there's no color work, just a little bit of color change for the contrasting part. The subtitle of this pattern, uh, which was meant to be the actual title of the pattern, is a Venetian word, i calzetti, which means in Venetian language uh, generally socks. So it's the word that uh, embraces all the type of socks that you can get. Um, I didn't want to put it as your first the title of the pattern or the name of the pattern itself because, of course, it's a Venetian word. It's difficult and it's not really easy to spell or to search, but the word itself, uh, embracing all the type of socks, means that, wants to mean that uh, you can really keep this pattern in your drawer, take it out when you wish and need whatever type of sock following this very simple, very effective recipe. So they are up in my rubbery store. Please, please, please check it out. And if you have any feedback, share it with me. I want that pattern, this pattern specifically, to be some tool that knitters can use to learn, to share and to customize as well. So this is my, my first work, uh, Ical City or Your Basic Gym Socks. And, of course, these socks here, being the first time I've knitted socks from the toe up and uh, with a after toe heel, they will be a great entry to the call that uh, Crea Bear is hosting, which is the Knitting First call on Instagram, Crea Bear 
I'm sure you know her. She is an amazing knitter and uh, podcaster here on YouTube. She is absolutely one of the people that inspires me the most uh, in knitting and in designing new stuff. And she's running this call for uh, something that you haven't knitted before. So this is my first time with uh, Toab and After Tortilla. So here they go into the Crea Bear Knitting First Cal. Going on with finish works, I have of course another pair of socks. These are called uh, K Corner Socks and it's another pattern that uh, I just published actually right before this video on my Ravelry store. It's a toe up pattern type of construction with again an afterthought heel. In this case you have a full-on color work. The color work starts from the very um, top after the toe is knitted and goes on all the way up. You won't have to think about the heel until the very end. I think it's kind of a step up in difficulty from these socks but just because there is a color work going on, a stranded color work. So a little bit about the pattern and then we'll get into the history of the name and why um, this design feature as well. This is knitted uh, toe up uh, with after toe to heel as I mentioned. It's a stranded color work full on all the way through. The yarn that I used here is once again Adria Field Calza Socks in the color number 35 if I'm right. 44 and 39, which is a dark grey and a yellow. The name of these socks, uh, Ca Corner, which means in Venetian uh, the house of the family Corner or Cornaro in Italian, it's a big building on the Gran Canal or the Canal Grande. I might put a little map of Venice over here. As you can see, there is a giant uh, canal across in the city and that back in the days used to be the main or the only way of communication and traffic towards the city. As you know, in Venice there are no cars and all the commerce and uh, the moving around people, animals or stuff is made through boats. And all the noble family or the richest family in the city used to build their homes facing the canal. This because, of course, it was easier to get access to the road and as well to show the people uh, of Venice and the Republic their wealth and their power. So we have now hundreds of fantastic and beautiful massive buildings that are facing the Grand Canal and I want for this little pattern kind of series to dedicate each design feature to one of these buildings. So in this case Ca Corner it's the house of the family Corner. The family Corner was a very important family because gave Venice uh, literally access to the east of the world. Um, the main or one of the principal uh, figure of the family is uh, Caterina Cornaro, which um, is known better to be the Queen of Cyprus. She married into um, the royal house of Cyprus and uh, she basically gifted the Republic of Venice, the island of Cyprus. And from that moment Venice could have access to the east and start all the commerce and start all this beautiful embracing of the eastern uh, Turkish Ottoman influence that Venice has nowadays. If you walk around Venice it seems like you are somewhere in the Middle East Eventually, it's so beautiful and you can really tell about all these influences. So I really wanted the first pattern of this series to be dedicated to something that gave the city where I come from such a big impact and cultural announcement. The color work that you can see in the pattern is actually 
present in a stonework on the very front of the building Kakorner. In the pattern, of course, I put a little picture as well of the building because, of course, I want to share a little bit of the influence of this pattern or the inspiration, let's say. The sizes available are like five from extra small to extra large and you can really customize this pattern size as you wish. Um, something to really be uh, aware of is that I do like my socks uh, quite short because I wear them around the house and I seldom wear them in shoes but you can go up uh, repeating the pattern on your cuff and do like a proper um, everyday type of sock if you want. I was saying that I would talk a little bit about uh, yarn. So these two patterns here are made up with uh, Calza Socks yarn uh, from Adriafil, which is an Italian brand of uh, wool yarn and uh, fiber generally. They have a massive range, it's a very commercial brand. You can quite find it in Ireland easily as well. Uh, it's not that common and the color range that I could find in Ireland it's really, really limited. But I do travel to Italy on a regular basis, so it's not um, difficult for me to get it in Italy. The problem is that uh, I really couldn't find any yarn for socks that would suit my style or the need that I have for yarn or what I want to achieve with my patterns. The classic sock yarn that you can find in Ireland quite easily is the Drops Fable, the one that this jumper is made out with. That yarn is fine, comes in a wide range of colors, it's very affordable. The problem is that I don't like the fabric that it creates. First of all, it's a really thin, and even if it's uh, for ply, uh, you can use a 2.5 millimeter needles or even go down a little bit of needle size. I feel like it's still really open as a fabric. It doesn't puff up very well when you wash it and it's still always quite flimsy. Again, I found this yarn quite cold as well. And I do like my socks to be really lofty and really warm and kind of hugging my feet, but the yarn is not really working well for me. So I went this week down to one of the local yarn shops here in Dublin, which is by the way an amazing shop, it's called the Winnie's Cafe. And if you are around Dublin, check it out because they have an amazing range of yarns and the stuff is just incredible. So Giving them all this background, how I don't like uh, Fable as a yarn and how I am um, finding it difficult to find a good yarn that has a percentage of uh, nylon, that is sturdy, but it's woolly, lofty and uh, comes in colors. They suggested me to use Drops North, which is a yarn that has a percentage of alpaca as well. I got a couple of balls of Drop North and um, I don't like it as well. I find that uh, that little bit of alpaca in the yarn gives uh, the fabric uh, a lot of stretch, first of all, and then the stitch definition for the color work is not great at all. It's a little warmer, but um, considering the negative side of the yarn, I don't think that will be my choice going forward. So I embark myself in a big internet research to get some nice sock yarn as a staple for my pattern design. I was looking at uh, Sunness Sisu, which is their 7555 yarn and um, Opal and regular yarns, I can't afford them. <laughs> uh, it's not that the yarn is expensive, but uh, importing the yarn from abroad will see other type of 
price input on the yarn. If a ball of yarn is around 5 uh, euro, I can't really bring myself to pay another 5 or 10 euro on the top of that for shipping or VAT. UK is not an option anymore as uh, buying yarn from uh, because they will charge you VAT. Buying from Norway is not really an option because the shipping cost is about uh, 25 to 35 euro and buying from other countries is, is always very very difficult. So if you have any suggestions for me, any yarn that is quite uh, easily available, I mean in Ireland of course, but uh, generally from Europe, that will give me the possibility of having a good range of color, um, a nice lofty fabric, the sturdiness of some nylonin, and of course uh, that is not breaking my bank. Please, please, please leave a comment below. I am kind of desperately looking for some sock yarn that I can use as my staple yarn. So here you have it, uh, my two pair of socks. These are two patterns that are for sale in my rugby store and if you want to get them, the link is below in the description and I'm running as well a discount for this week. So please check it out and again, if you have any feedback, share it with me. The next and uh, unfortunately last finish work that I have for this week is a Christmas ball from Arne and Carlos. This comes from their 55 Christmas ball to knits and it is the snowman ball which I knitted using drops fable white and uh, dark red or ruby and of course it's quite nice pretty and uh, it has a little snowman on it. As you know I am embarking in this uh, challenge of knitting all Arne and Carlos Christmas balls. I purchased the book of course which have uh, 55 Christmas balls and then all the other balls collection that I could come up with which brings us to a total of 150 Christmas balls altogether. For now I've only knitted six, five or six which brings me really really behind schedule with Christmas balls but uh, this week I really didn't have time to knit anything. I am starting a new job in a couple of weeks and uh, so everything was around winding down my current job and handing over stuff and then start learning for the new position which is going to be quite challenging, is a completely different environment from what I am used to do. So I didn't really have time to knit much, but uh, I did put the effort to get a Christmas ball at least. This is not blocked, so you can see it's a little bit rough around the edges. Uh, I don't plan to block them until Christmas next year, just because um, they will be stored in a tote bag and they will be squished and uh, thrown around so they are not gonna keep the shape. So maybe before they are up on the Christmas tree I will get myself to block them all and have them beautifully looking for next year. So here you go. And this is the last of my finish work. This brings us nicely into works in progress and the first work in progress that I have, as you know, I am in the mojo of knitting socks. These are the Curious Socks by Andrea Mori and these are so beautiful. I think everybody and their dogs have knitted these socks and these have a little work of color type of situation. This is not stranded color work but I really love the texture that this color works gives and you see all the yarns hanging off here because we have another afterthought heel type of construction that is just in. So I knitted this one and I have started the next one. I just have the toes and a little bit of the, the foot done, but nothing much to be honest. I'm using Knit Pro 2.5 uh, 50 centimeter cable needles for this. 
and the yarn that I'm using is another Adriafil Calza Socks color 44 and 34 which is a nice deep green and a maroon type of color. I absolutely love these socks because of the texture they are giving and the fulness of the fabric is just beautiful. I am sure I'm gonna wear them so much and I'm just looking for other color combination to knit them. They are quite fast to knit as well. This probably took me just a few hours and uh, I can't wait to finish them. The thing that I learned of these socks is the Judy Magic cast off uh, or bind off knitted on the inside which gives, I don't know if you can see from the camera here, but gives the sock a beautiful type of eye cord ribbing, which I never was expecting and is extremely, extremely stretchy. So that is definitely something I might think to incorporate in one of my patterns. This cast off or bind off is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm just looking for other color combination. I really want to get uh, another pair of these ones and uh, a very long one as well because I feel like they are very very warm and I do really love a little bit of texture on my feet as well. So here you go with the Curious Socks from Andrea Mori. This is a for sale pattern on rubbery and you can find it down here below or I will definitely put a link in my rubbery store as well. The next work that I'm uh, kind of doing is a little bit of a mess of yarns and uh, pieces. I don't know how the other podcasts do this, but um, we have a back and we have a side which doesn't look like a side, but it's not being blocked and it's all stuck in it. So this is the Rogeresque cardigan from Mary Thousand and I'm going to put a picture of the pattern or the model here because this doesn't give any um, idea of what the thing is but it's just a very simple very classic looking cardigan is knitted in a worsted weight yarn and for this I'm using a merino extra fine uh, yarn from uh, Drops, which is this one. This is a, um, a superwash uh, merino yarn. It's really, really soft. Uh, it's a worsted weight, 21 stitches per 28 rows and the color is dark grey or number 03. Um, I had this in stash for a long time as I tend not to like um, superwash yarns and I don't like definitely merino yarns because I don't know if you can see from this work here but uh, the stitch definition or situation is not great uh, the stitches tend to cling to a side if you want, giving this odd weird shape to the stitches. But I want to distash some of my yarns, especially those bulk yarns that for some reason I bought when I started knitted, knitting and I thought uh, they were just regular basic yarns. But Growing into this knitting world, I found myself preferring more lightweight yarns, fingerings, four plies, eventually decays. So I really don't have room for worse weight. And I really was looking for a nice cardigan as well to knit. And this pattern brought everything together. Once again, they have around uh, 250 projects on the pattern, so literally everybody knitted it. I saw that it was really simple and it really is flying off the needles. I think these two pieces are worth three evenings of knitting and I probably would get the other side of the cardigan done this evening. It's so simple, the construction is really easy. The thing that scares me a little bit is that it comes in pieces knitting back and forth 
and then you have to sew them together. I am not great as a sewist and I don't know if I am able to tailor them very well. If you have any recommendation for me or if you know about any video tutorial that explains how to sew a garment together like this, please let me know. I do plan to block all the pieces before as I found that may be the case to get more of a structure and a shape. I block the back already and uh, once blocking something really weird happened. The fabric used to be really nice and uh, together tight type of thing. I washed it, I blocked it and the fabric became a giant slouchy type of throw thing more than a jumper. So I'm sure it's because it's merino and I'm sure it's because it's super wash and doesn't really stay together. So my fear is that this is gonna become massive and uh, is gonna lose its shape quite easily. So, well, it's not a... It's not really a problem as I'm kind of looking for the type of cardigan that you can just put on and uh, work about something warm, something that is not really formal. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of worried about uh, the situation of the finished project, how it's going to look like and how it's going to especially block. I was able to get this piece back into some sort of shape but still I'm noticing, and you can as well notice how transparent it is after blocking. Something that you can't really notice in a piece that is not blocked. So yeah, it, it is what it is. Let's see where this goes. Hopefully I get it finished by next week. And of course I'm using my 4mm uh, needles from uh, Chaogu that you saw came last week or the week before and they are really becoming my favorite needles. They are really beautiful, the yarn just slides off the needles and especially in this case that you need to back and forth, this is just amazing because the needles really speed up your work very very much. And my last work in progress is of course my own sweater <laughs> design, which I'm showing on camera because I don't care anymore. It's been such a long piece of work and uh, designing this pattern is really really a work of love, a labor of love as they say. But I finished the body of the jumper and I started the sleeve. I don't remember where I put it but it's just a little piece of sleeve. I was planning to finish this by the end of January and get it to you lovely people that want to test knit this jumper, this is not gonna happen. This is such a big piece of work and uh, things that I have to take into consideration before even drafting the pattern are so many and uh, yeah, I just want to get it finished and knitted up by the end of January and then from then on I will start drafting the pattern and eventually sending it out to you guys. But if you are interested and you want me to get your name in a spreadsheet, send me a message below or an email through irishfarmart.gmail.com that I'm gonna put here and I will um, send you the pattern as soon as I have it. So this is a color work jumper that would kind of a remind the Sunderstall uh, sweater with a lice pattern on the body and then a color work here. The thing that I've uh, kind of done differently on the design side, the color work is a traditional alpine pattern from the north of Venice. I've extensively talked about this pattern before with the hearts and flowers here and you can find this literally everywhere in um, household decors and even my my tablecloth here has the same pattern 
it's everywhere in the region where I'm from, so I really wanted to incorporate this in the design. The second piece is the sticking situation. As you can see, this is a tube or a pipe knitted in the round, and I only left a little stitch marker where the sleeves will be going. So traditionally you will need to sew the two sides here where the sleeve will be sewn in, cut, slash it open and then sew the sleeve. I find that process terrifying and I know that many of you as well find the process of sticking terrifying. So I'm trying to figure out a way to make it easier without having to secure your stitches and without having to slash open your work straight away but uh, I don't know probably creating a kind of sticking the other way around so start sewing the sleeve and then uh, very very carefully opening from the inside the sleeve I have no idea I need to experiment with this a little bit more and finally the color piece it's basically a big color that I decided to turn on the inside and uh, stitch together just because I really like a very um, sturdy and lofty color in my jumpers. This that I'm wearing is done in the same way as well. This pattern doesn't have a name yet. If you have name suggestions, again, send a comment below. I'm looking forward to it. And it's knitted up in um, an alpaca yarn, actually, Drops Nord, which is uh, 50% wool, 25% alpaca and 25% nylon for two reasons. First of all, because I have an alpaca jumper that I really love very much and I really wanted another alpaca colorwork jumper. Although the stitch definition is not great, blah blah blah, as we just said, I feel like uh, the type of fabric that he creates, it's uh, really nice, so it gets probably a point towards the stitch definition not being great. So it's a nice yarn, I really love the color combination and I really love the fabric as well. So here you have it. This brings us to the very end of my works in progress. Although I have so many works that I can't just wait to cast on that I consider already works in progress. But let's talk about that in the next segment of this video, which will be acquisitions. Let's talk about acquisitions now. And uh, for the first time ever, I have a lot of acquisition. The first bundle of uh, stuff that I got it's four skeins of uh, Darni from Studio Donegal, which is 100% lamb's wool spawn in Ireland, in a tiny village in Donegal, which is on the northwest of the Republic. These are fingering weight yarns and uh, comes in the color number 8802, which is uh, like a sort of a mustardy color. I think in the camera looks more orange than uh, what they are, but they are really a nice uh, summery type of tone. And um, they are a two-ply uh, fingering weight yarn that I bought originally to make a anchor sweater from Petit Knit. Once again, a lot of projects on Ravelry for that specific sweater. I plan to knit the boyfriend size, which is like the more, um, the larger size of the masculine uh, version of the, the garment. And it's absolutely beautiful. I got this colorway because uh, of another knitting podcaster that is a really an inspiration for my work and uh, for the things that I want. Uh, I'm talking about, of course, uh, Jonathan Days, which has a fantastic podcast here and it has knitted uh, the Anchor Sweater Boyfriend Size in a color very similar to this one, 
which I absolutely love. And when I saw the podcast, I was like, I must, really, really must have that jumper. And being impossible for me to fly to London, where he is from, and steal that jumper, I was thinking of knitting the same. So last week, as we said, I went to uh, one of the local yarn shop and uh, I was like, I really want this shade of, um, of Studio Donegal. And uh, I just bought four skeins, uh, which is uh, a nice amount for a jumper. It's quite on the affordable side. It is, uh, let's say... It is 100 grams for 410 meters. So four skeins will give us the quantity for a sweater for my size, I think. The price is around 12 euro 50, which is uh, extremely good because with four skein as like 50 euro, you get a perfectly beautiful jumper for you. I really bet you to go into a retailing shop, a clothing shop, and buy a jumper for 50 euro. There's nothing out there, not even Zara or H&M. So, when there, I was like, I want this color, I want this yarn, I want something Irish, I want something really woolly, something nice, and I bought this. Came home, and I found myself uh, looking at the pattern and trying to cast on and the pattern calls for a DK yarn 22 stitches per 10 centimeters. This is 4 ply yarn 28 stitches per 10 centimeters. So I got really annoyed, frustrated, just because I didn't think, I didn't check I was there, I got overwhelmed by the amount of yarn and I got overwhelmed by how beautiful this Studio Donegal yarn is and I really didn't check the weight of the yarn. So now I have four skeins on the color that I love that are at no use for the Anger sweater. So what I've done is buy more yarn, of course. It's not here yet, but I was looking at uh, the gauge of my yarns and what could I use and I really wanted to stick to Studio Donegal because it's Irish, because it's a lovely wool and I had this in stock here. This is a DK yarn from Studio Donegal, it's 100% wool as well and this is the color 3750, it's like a the speckly lightish gray and I had one skein in stash that I was keeping there to make uh, probably some accessories like a hat or uh, a little bit of a cowl as well to design something this is very good for cabling it's very good for pattern uh, definition and it's quite priceless as well it's around the same amount, 12, 14 euros, so it's not my general drops yarn that I can just throw and uh, I use as I wish. So I was really careful about using this game. By the way, I balled it up like this and it took me forever. Skein comes in hunks like this and uh, I should really get one of those cranky type of machine to cake up the yarn and I know that bolding up the yarn like this is not good for the texture of the yarn itself but we don't have many um, stuff here as uh, it comes to accessory for knitting so for now it is what it is I'm definitely going to look into one of those little uh, kind of cranky machine to skein up my hunks anyway I had this one uh, in stash and I was like, okay, I am going to see if I can get a gauge using this yarn and I can get a perfect gauge. The color, I was like, mm, I don't really like it. It's really kind of a light grayish type of color. I already have gray jumpers, just one, other ones. 
But when I did my swatch, just a 10 cm type of square that I, of course, unravel back to in this bowl here because I'm quite uh, frugal with these type of things. I really love the texture, I really love the yarn. I'm still not mad for the color, but I think it can do for a very nice, plain workhorse workhorse jumper and so I bought other three skeins of this that will come in the post hopefully today or tomorrow and I will get the anchor sweater in this lovely DK grey yarn. In the same way these four skeins here, four hunks, I was looking at what I could do with these hunks and uh, if you are following me for a while, you see that um, actually my first episode I was mentioning the Arne and the Carlos Save the Children sweater, which is a Ranglan sweater that I have been knitting before and I've knitted it in alpaca from Drops, which is gorgeous. It's just a little bit too warm. So I got a contrasting color, which is a um, sort of electric blue, to go with these four skeins here and I really want to knit that sweater once again. I feel like I do need a raglan sweater in my wardrobe because it's just very easy to put on and I really love the color work in this specific uh, sweater from Arne and Carlos. I think it's very very clever. So the other skein is gonna come and I will probably update you on next video. In terms of acquisitions I really don't have anything else acquired currently but in the post there's quite a bit of yarn coming which is really odd from me um, because of course I don't really uh, spend a lot of money on buying yarn on a regular basis but I really got bitten by the bug of um, making sweaters now and uh, drafting patterns. So another jumper that I want to make it's the bubble sweater by Stephen West and that is another pattern that has been inspired by uh, Jonathan Davies on his podcast and he has a beautiful bubble sweater himself. I was uh, looking through the project for the bubble sweater on Ravelry and I saw this amazing a sweater knitted in dark grey and like a purpley, purple-ish burgundy color it really catch my eyes, it's really beautiful I'm putting a picture here, I hope the owner doesn't mind and if he's watching this channel please 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 let me know where you found a beautiful yarn I can't find that anywhere but to get similar shades I got uh, some Cascade 220 I never ever knitted on that type of yarn but I've seen so many podcasters and knitters talking about that yarn so I feel like it was about time for me to try it so I got uh, six skeins in uh, dark grey and a couple of skeins in this purplish wine color and it's gonna come as well so I have two, three new sweaters that are going to be works in progress from next week and I'm super excited about. I just need to finish some of the works that I've uh, in progress here and cast off and free my needles. So, so here you go with my acquisitions. It's been a lot of uh, um, looking for yarns and uh, researching type of yarns and actually putting myself in the mindset of spending a little bit more and getting some very good quality yarns rather than falling into my classic drops mojo which is uh, really good and I feel like will be really achieving a next steps into my knitting experience if this does make any sense at all. I haven't got any books to review for you this week as I didn't really buy any because I think my bookshelf, I don't know if you have any sneak peek over there, 
is just quite full and um, I got a few patterns on Ravelry from online stores so I really didn't feel the urge of buying more books but I'm really looking into getting a couple of uh, Lane edition and as well uh, really a few Pompon magazines. I feel like uh, those type of publishers really brings up what is modern in today's knitting and uh, I really feel like I kind of want to get to know more of the contemporary designers as well in order to of course inform my work but as well getting inspired for new works too. So on to some more personal stuff. First of all I want to mention a couple of uh, knitting podcasts and first and foremost uh, a big thank you to Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit, uh, which is a fantastic podcaster and of course you can find her channel link below in the description and Ruth gave me a beautiful shout out in her last podcast which is something that I wasn't expecting and it absolutely filled my heart with joy. So thank you Ruth and everybody please go check her out. She is natural podcasting personality I would say. She is brilliant. Another shout out that I want to give is of course uh, Crea Bea, Rebecca from uh, the Crea Bea Knitting Podcast. Uh, again she is a very talented knitter and I absolutely love her podcast so so inspiring and her graphic and the picture is so beautiful i really don't know how she does that and it's always every single episode a really big learning curve for me as a knitter and as well as a podcaster so another big thank you to crea bea and go check her out and then finally I have mentioned him before, uh, Jonathan Days uh, with Jonathan Days podcast here on YouTube again. I am really drawn to every single design that he's working on and every single jumper that he does. I don't know if it's the boy knitting type of situation that I am so infatuated with uh, his works, his color choices or is the fact that he's actually a brilliant and very talented knitter so I really am inspired by his podcast and his creation so go check him out. I really wish there were more knitting podcast designers that were men or guys or boys <laughs> because I really find that uh, very inspiring for me as a guy who knits and I think it's um, something that this world is missing a little bit. So let's get back into the nitty-gritty of the situation and the moment that probably a lot of you were waiting for which is the 500 subscribers giveaway. So the giveaway was announced last week as uh, this channel very tiny channel reached the 500 subscribers we have now more than 700 subscribers so it was a great milestone for me and i'm really really happy i can give something back to you as well that you are so kind to comment on my videos and give me so many very very good and constructive feedback as well and just the love and the warmth that you spare with me was just amazing. So this giveaway will be comprised of of course a drawstring bag that I made myself, three balls of this lovely Jameson's and Smith uh, yarn which is in their moss uh, green color this is a Shetland uh, fingerweight yarn. There will be a 40 uh, centimeter, 2.5 millimeter, uh, 3.5 millimeter needles from a Knit Pro. This is the Zing one, and of course a knitting pattern from my own knitting pattern. I will um, uh, print out the pattern that uses this yarn, which is a convertible mittens pattern and this will be shipped to one of you. 
as well. The prompt for the giveaway was to recommend me some uh, knitting bags because as you see I do tend to use um, drawstring bags that I made out of uh, fabric or just tote bags that uh, I find around but I found that uh, a lot of podcasters are talking about these amazing project bags and um, everybody consistently seemed to be really in love with their project bags so I haven't experienced that uh, side of my knitting yet and I really want to get a little bit into that too I mean I am a very frugal knitter probably but uh, I would love to have at least a couple of a very good quality very nice project bags that probably will keep my work more tidy and as well draw me to open them and uh, use them and knit them and travel with them as well. So that was the prompt. Uh, we um, got into a little bit of uh, trouble for videos. Uh, the previous podcast has been uploaded twice because YouTube didn't like my name change and um, uh, removed one of the videos. And that first video already had 54 comments. Uh, the second upload had probably 130 comments. So the way I went through uh, choosing a winner uh, has been putting all the comments from the two videos together on a spreadsheet and then uh, using a computer-generated algorithm that randomly pick a number picking a number on the line of the spreadsheet and then that uh, was the winner. So the winner of this channel will be here and it is Nerdy Knitting. I really hope Nerdy Knitting will contact me and um, if you are watching this video please send me a message on uh, uh, robbery or Instagram or indeed an email through my email address and all the informations are below and I'll be really pleased to ship to you this project bag with yarn, needles and my knitting pattern and uh, if you receive it please give me any feedback on the knitting pattern or as well how you found this yarn. If I have done my research correctly uh, nerdy Knitting, she is a wonderful knitter uh, based probably in Canada if I'm right and she is a knitting teacher so this may be the case that you have something to teach me <laughs> on the pattern writing or yarn choice and I am really looking forward for your feedback as well. So congratulations to Nerdy Knitting, please 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 contact me. Uh, if Nerdy Knitting doesn't contact me until the uh, next podcast, I will probably draw someone else from uh, the previous videos. So here it is for this uh, podcast. I have talked for so long and I feel really stupid because I can see from out of the window out there all my neighbors passing by with their dogs and seeing me looking at the camera and of course all the curtains are open because of the sun coming in. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please consider to subscribe, comment, like everything that uh, YouTubers say, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.